How you feeling? How things going? I'm feeling great. I'm blessed. Um, our our bubble our bubble is awesome. Um, our, our kids our kids are doing a hell of a job. You know, obviously our head coach is um, doing a great job of leading this thing. Um, it's it's been a really good deal. Yeah. I think the simplest question is obviously back in more now. This is eight years ago now, February. Uh, we were talking about just the the approach of figuring out what you had and what the players could do before you could tailor what you wanted to do with them. Uh, where do you feel like you are along that in that process? What is the stuff we did through Zoom to now? Yeah, we're um, we're you know we're in the beginning stages of that because you know missing missing that much of spring ball definitely mm -hmm. definitely gets you back. But I'm very thankful that we're getting what we're getting right now. And we're learning a lot about our guys. Um, I think because of Zoom, in, in many ways, we're, we're ahead of where we would normally be. But um, I tell the guys all the time, there's a difference between knowing and doing. Um, Zoom allowed us to, to introduce things and the guys um, had an understanding and, and knowing of the concepts, but now physically getting it done is another thing. So our execution level has to meet our knowledge level. Is is are there any complications that come with people start talking about how complicated it is to install an offense and so on and so forth? And defensively, there's so many concepts and ideas or whatever. Do you, is it challenging or different trying to translate that over whatever kind of technology and then doing it now with full practices on and not full full contacts on? There's there's definitely challenges and you know um, I, I do I do think one one of the positives for us as coaches is COVID has, has forced us to be more organized and more direct and straight to the point as far as how you teach the guys or you know the the um, the volume of what you would normally run has has had to shrink um, just so you give our you give your guys a chance to be effective. Um, so yeah, it, it's a challenge. It's a challenge always to 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 make it match up, like we talked about, match up to the to the personnel that you have. But number two, what what can we actually get done um, within the time frame that we have? We'll go next to Dan Rubin. Hey, Coach, how are you? Good man. How are you? Good, thanks. Um, kind of building off of that, the the this, you know, having a simple scheme versus a more complex scheme. Do you see how things maybe start off a little bit simpler, even if you're going through execution, but they're to meet their knowledge and then try to add new things, or is it try to to digest things as they're as they're coming and and give them the complex scheme and and, and shoot higher and say what can we do and and then go from there. Sure. Um, so I. This is one of Coach Hass' philosophies is, you know, especially on defense, we got to be fundamentally sound. It's all about the fundamentals. And I, you know, being a little bit, um, being a little bit simpler schematically allows the guys to play with better technique and better, you know, um, eye discipline and, and things that make you good on defense. So that's, that's the angle we're coming from. Um, you know, we, you have to establish a foundation and then build from there. Um, you know, once we establish our foundation of what, what we do, what we're, what we're going to be, once game planning comes around, then, then maybe you can step up or, or do some, um, some tinkering from there. But um, it, it's all about establishing a foundation first. We'll go next to A.J. Black. Hi, Coach. How you doing? Great. How are you? Great. Um, obviously getting a player back like Max Richardson for another year is a big deal for your defense. Can you talk a little bit about what he means to your team and how the summer has been going so far for him? Yeah. Um, Max has been every, he's been as advertised as a leader. Um, you know, I, I can honestly say he's one of the better leaders I've been around in college football. Um, he, he, dem he demands respect and the way he does that is through his actions first and foremost. And um, vocally, he's, he's as good as I've been around in college ball. Um, he's, he's doing it by example. He's, you know, he, um, he's all about FTT. He's, he's all about tough love compete. He, he's, um, he's a Boston College Eagle through and through. Um, you know, thank goodness we have him. Um, you know, as a player, he's having a, a, a really solid camp. He's doing what he's supposed to do. And um, I'm really glad we have him. Um, you know, he sets the tone for a lot of the guys in that locker room. And, um, you know, for, for the coaches, that's, that goes a long way. 
I'm sorry. What was the other part of the question? Uh, that that was basically you answered it great. Thank you. You got it. We'll go next to Dan Rubin. Um, one other one other question I had was, you know, when we talk about the the defense and the and the personnel, um, I know that the other it had to be a few days ago. Um, Zion Johnson specifically mentioned Marcus Valdez as as having a potential for a slippery tough guy to block. That entire defensive line, the guys who came back, seems like there's a good mix of of youth and, and experience guys. Uh, just how do they play off each other on the line? Are they fast? Are they slippery? Are they strong? Like, how, how do you kind of see them? Yeah, it, it all it all starts with um, the, the, the the fundamentals that, that Coach Vince teaches. He's one of the best teachers I've ever been around as far as defensive line play goes. And, and that's being reflected in the play of the guys. Um, they all know what the standard is as far as playing with technique and leverage. And that's what Marcus does. Mar Marcus is, um, Marcus is, he strives to be a technician, um, you know, because at the end of the day, the reality is he's not a six foot six long levered this or that, but he makes up for it by playing with technique and leverage. And that's what we demand from everybody on the defensive line. And we're, you know, so far so good. We're, we're trying to, not trying to, but we're getting them to do it more consistently. Um, that's what it comes down to when you play on the defensive line is how consistent can you be, um, you know, with being relentless, physical, and um, playing with leverage. We'll go next to Kevin Stone. Hey, Coach, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good, thanks. Uh, there's some talk out there today that high school football in this area uh, might get canceled this year. Can you just speak to how important – uh, the game was to you at that age and, and kind of your development and, and where you are today? Um, yeah, it's, it, 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 you know, high school football for me was, was a, was a, was a passion, um, borderline, borderline obsession where, where you would do a lot of the hard things that it takes to be a good football player without even thinking about it. You know what I mean? Um, the, the, you're talking about, you know, I hate to say it now, but back in the days, you're talking about back in the days now, three days. And you didn't even think twice about it, where you're having three practices in one day and a lift and long runs. And, but you didn't mind it because I didn't mind it because I loved it so much. And, um, you know, the other part of it, the, the reality was it was, it, was, it was a perfect means to an end. It was going to help me get an education that I probably normally would not have had the opportunity to. Um, it, it, it helped me, you know, make lifelong relationships. It, it set up lo lifelong relationships or um, understanding how to deal with, you know, things that are difficult and come through them or work for what I want. Um, so um, that, whole, that whole thing me means a lot to me. And, um, you know, it, it's, I, 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 feel, I feel really bad for kids that are in that situation where they don't know what tomorrow is going to be as far as, you know, am I going to have the opportunity to, to, to go through the same things that I went through when I was in high school? It's, it's a very tough spot. I, I, think, I think it's a huge character builder. Um, a, a lot of who I am today is, is owed to, you know, that, the opportunities that I had, including high school, high school ball. Thank you. And we'll, we'll wrap things up with Julian. Does, um, I was just curious, uh, has it, have you gotten a sense from the guys who, who are coming back? Because uh, it's a proud defense, obviously, and it took some lumps last year. Yeah. Uh, that this was something that they wanted to kind of uh, put behind them, but also, you know, sort of bounce back from last year. Yeah, yeah. I, I think you bring up a good point. At the end of the day, these guys are – they're Division One football players. They're in the ACC. They're Power Five players. They have a sense of pride about them. Um, I, I I will tell you that one of the one of the fantastic things that that Coach Halfley did was we don't talk about anything that's happened before. We only talk about what's going on now and how we can improve and move forward. Um, so you know whatever happened last year, we tell the guys it doesn't define them. That's not who they are. They're only who they are today or now in that moment. And they have something to say about that. They can't rewrite what happened in the past. 
all right? But you can control your narrative on what's happening now and the next play. So, um, you know, it, 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 was a, it, was a tough, it was a tough year and, you know, nobody, nobody wants to not be good st statistically at anything, um, but you, you learn off of it and you move forward. Tim, thank you so much for the time today. We appreciate it. All right, you got it. Thanks, guys. Be safe.